Hey everyone, and welcome back to our electronics tutorial series. My name is Aaron from AX Electronic, and today we are going to continue on the topic of MOSFETs and talk about one of the basic applications of them, using them as switches. So, you may know from prior experience that you can't always just control things with GPIO pins on your microcontroller. So usually those GPIO pins are current limited, which means that if you try and supply too much current to something like a motor or just a high demanding load, that you're gonna end up breaking your microcontroller, which is definitely not good. So what we can do is that we can actually use these MOSFETs as an electrically controlled switch. Okay, so instead of having to manually flip a switch or mechanically flip a switch, we can use it only electricity in order to either turn this switch on or off. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So using a MOSFET as a switch. Like we said before, in most applications where we need a switch, we're going to be using a physical switch like this, where maybe we use our hands and physically flip it up or down like a light switch. But that's not always a good case, right? Because number one, having moving parts means that things are going to break down eventually. And number two, you may not want to physically flip the switch. Maybe you want your microcontroller to flip a switch for you. Maybe if you have like a Raspberry Pi home hub, you want to be able to wirelessly flip a switch to turn on your lights, turn on whatever it is that you're trying to turn on. Okay, you don't want to have to go and physically flip it, so you can actually use a MOSFET for this case. So this MOSFET, again, remember we have our gate, drain, and a source because this is an NMOS MOSFET, so this is our gate, drain, and source. We can apply a signal to this gate, so if we apply something like 5 volts to this gate, our source is at 0 volts, so that means that our VGS is equal to 5 volts. So it's going to try and supply as much current as it possibly can. So what happens is that if this is a low resistance load, a lot of current is going to start being applied very quickly. And when most of this voltage is going to be dropped across this resistor, that means our VDS is going to be really, really low, which means that we're still operating in that triode region, which is really good. So these MOSFETs kind of give us a layer of abstraction from our microcontroller to whatever it is that we're trying to switch or a layer of isolation. It's not perfect galvanic isolation, but it does help protect things like your microcontroller from blowing up from supplying too much current. So let's look at a little bit of a realistic application, okay? Because all of this stuff has gotten very hand wavy in the past few videos. So I wanna look at an actual application using a real MOSFET. So we have a five volt supply, a 10 volt or a 10 ohm, excuse me, 10 ohm resistor. And we have this MOSFET here, IRFZ44NPBF. Now this is an actual NMOS MOSFET and I pulled some of its uh, graphs from its data sheet and have them here. So we have the VDS versus ID we have a VGS versus ID, okay? So let's assume that this is hooked up to a five volt controller. So that means that this can either be five volts or zero volts, okay? So it's a digital signal, it's not gonna be anywhere in between. Now our source is hooked up to ground, so that means that VS is equal to zero volts. And what that tells us is that VG is equal to VS, always. Okay, because our VS is zero, so if our VG is five volts, our, oops, excuse me, not VS, is equal to VGS. So if our VG is equal to five volts, our VS is equal to zero volts, that means our VGS is five volts. Okay, now <clears throat> let's look at a couple of cases. So we know that if we have zero volts as VGS, no current is gonna flow at all. So if we wanna turn off whatever, or if we wanna turn off this current, so if we want ID to equal zero, for ID to equal zero, we know that we just set VG is equal to zero, right? So we set VG is equal to zero, and as long as our MOSFET can withstand five volts on its drain pin, so a VDS of five volts, then we're gonna be perfectly fine. Most MOSFETs are a little bit tougher and they can handle this five volts, but it is still wise to make sure, okay? Now, what gets interesting is when we start turning this on. So we need to take a look at this graph. So let's start taking a look at what happens when we turn this on. So when we turn this on, we're applying five volts to VGS. So if we take a look here, uh, if our junction temperature is 25 degrees C, that means we're gonna be right about here, okay? So this is at room temperature. If we are not driving this MOSFET too high and it's not getting too hot, our MOSFET is going to try and send this current amps, 10, 20, about 25 amps, okay? So we're gonna try and send 25 amps with this MOSFET if we have five volts on our VGS. Now, there is no way in the world that we can possibly send 25 amps through this 
10 ohm resistive load. Because remember, Ohm's law tells us that V is equal to IR. So if we have 25 amps times a 10 ohm resistor, that means we would need 250, not 25, 250 volts across that resistor, which is simply not happening with this five volt supply, right? So what ends up happening is that our MOSFET is going to kind of reach a stable equilibrium, okay? So it's gonna kind of reach a stable equilibrium. So we know that we're going to try and supply 25 amps, okay? But this is going to assume a VDS of 25 volts. And that's not happening, right? Because our VDS is maximum five volts. So we're, we know that this can't exactly be right, but let's just assume we're gonna try and send 25 amps, okay? So what's actually gonna happen is that our VDS is going to be somewhere around, uh, let's say it's gonna be less than one volt probably. So let's just say it's gonna be around 0 0.1 volts. This is for a VGS of 4.5, this is for five. Okay, so this is our five volt line here, this one. So we know that our VDS is gonna be really low whenever we start supplying a lot of current, okay? So if we apply a VGS of five, the more current that we supply, the lower and lower our VDS is going to get. So we might assume our VDS is all the way down here and that's barely two, three, four amps, okay? So four amps, okay? Now, this is getting very numerical for a very simple application. Pretty much what's going to end up happening in most cases is that if this MOSFET is all the way turned on, which it is, it's trying to supply 25 amps here, four amps here, it's trying to supply quite a bit of current. Then what's going to happen is that we're actually going to be limited by our supply here. So it's gonna reach that stable equilibrium, like I said. So let's see, our max ID, if we assume that this MOSFET has a zero ohm on resistance, our max ID is going to be this voltage, so five volts, divided by that resistance, 10 ohms. Okay, so our maximum ID is going to be 0 0.5 amps. Oop, wrong way. So if we take a look over here, we don't even have 0 0.5 amps on this graph. Okay, so this is going to be really, really small. Our drain source voltage is gonna be really, really small for this five volt VGS. Okay, so we're gonna have a really, really small drain voltage. So it's almost like it's a short circuit. So in this application, we are performing really, really well. So what we can assume is going to happen in this instance is that whenever we apply five volts, our ID is going to be about 0 0.5 amps. It's gonna be a little bit different. It might be, it's gonna be a little bit lower, but if our VG is equal to five volts, we're gonna have about 0 0.5 amps through there. So this is performing really, really well as a switch because it's a super low on resistance and a really low, or a super, excuse me, super high off resistance, okay? So it's not letting any current flow when it's off, but whenever it's on, it's acting almost like a short circuit, which is exactly what we want from our switches, okay? So this is working really, really well. If this were a higher current load, then we might need to drive this guy a little bit higher, okay? So instead of having five volts, if we wanna send maybe 10 amps through this MOSFET, then we might need to have somewhere around 10 volts here, maybe even higher than that. But for a relatively low current application, this is gonna be an awesome switch. Now, the last thing that I wanna talk about in this video, it's gonna end up being pretty brief, is low side versus high side switching. So in this previous case, you'll notice that I had my source tied directly to ground. So you might've been wondering, well, why do we have to do that? Can't we have our MOSFET all the way up here at the top? And the answer is yes, you definitely can. So this is gonna be something called high side switching. So this is high side and this is low side because it's either connected to the low or high voltage. So here we're connected directly, oops, we're connected directly to low, here we're connected directly to our, oops, directly to our high. But it does come with some trade-offs, okay? So here we know that our source is always zero, okay? So that means that our VG is always equal to VGS. That was the first assumption that we made and that let us simplify the problem quite a bit. In this case, that's not always the instance, okay? So whenever, excuse me, whenever we have this MOSFET turned off, okay, no current is flowing, okay? So we're expecting this, oh, excuse me, we're expecting, we're expecting this to be at about zero volts, okay? Because no current is flowing through this resistor, 
and that means that this is going to be at the same potential. The MOSFET is the one that's blocking or dropping all of that potential. So we're expecting our source to be at about zero volts. Now, the only issue is that, or excuse me, in this case, we have our VG is equal to VGS. But once we start letting current flow through, so if we try and turn this switch on, current is going to be begin flowing through this resistor. And that means that there's going to be a voltage drop here. And now, Vs is no longer zero volts. And that means that Vg does not equal Vgs anymore. So that becomes pretty complicated. So let's assume that we have this MOSFET operating like a short circuit to begin with. So let's go back to our old example. And if we have this MOSFET operating like a short circuit, we have five volts at the top, 10 ohm load. If it's operating like a short circuit, we're expecting five volts here. So that means our Vs is equal to five volts. If we can only apply 5 volts to our gate, we have 5 volts here, 5 volts down at the bottom, so now our VGS is equal to 0 volts. So it becomes a whole lot harder to use an NMOS in a high side switching scheme. NMOS is better for low side switching. If you did want to do high side switching, then you would need to alternate it to a PMOS or a P-channel. Because in the case of a PMOS, what happens is that, if you remember, let's get this out of the way, we remember for a PMOS, we have our gate, we have our two terminals here, and our source is actually at the top. So now our source is at the top and our source is fixed at VDD. So our source voltage is not going to change anymore. So that means that we have a very predictable change in VGS, or we can directly change VGS by changing our gate voltage. Okay, so that makes the PMOS a little bit better choice for high side switching. Now, it's not impossible to use an NMOS for high side switching, but it is going to be a little bit more complicated. So I prefer using PMOS for high side and NMOS for low side. Okay, so this has been a gentle introduction to MOSFETs as switches. There's definitely more complex material that we could cover, but for a general introduction, this is really all that you need to know to start using these MOSFETs as switches. I really encourage you to plug this example into LT Spice. That way you can kind of see how it behaves, see what I was mentioning before about how the current isn't exactly 0.5 amps, but it does drop a little bit. Now you can just get a little bit more intuitive feel for how these MOSFETs behave. You could also try implementing this high side switching scheme into LT Spice to see why exactly this would end up failing if you're limited on your supply voltage. So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you like this comment or if you like this content, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to see more. It really does motivate me to see new subscribers and new thumbs up. Other than that, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.